Hello everybody and welcome to the Sonic Boom Commentaries pre-show for episode 45. Yes, oh, hi. believe it or not, there is a, we're up to 45. <laughs> Interrupted mid-catchphrase there was Donnie, say hello Donnie. Hello Donnie. And not interrupted mid catchphrase and saying hello anyway, but I'm going to ask her to say it's hello again. It's Cat. Say hello, Cat. Hello. There we go. Um, it is the day after our recording of episode 44, so the pre show will consist of zero feedback and zero questions, zero comments and zero questions uh, because we've done them all and we said we'd do them all. Um, so it's going to be this show where we go through the TV tropes for Sonic Boom. Oh my. Or are those guys are going to read about I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> yes. um, also, this episode was not written by Reed Harrison. Da, da, da. Oh, Exactly. Um, it's a insert knuckles from the episode here. It's a Roman von <coughs> Roman van Lint episode. Roman van Lint episode, um, and it features tales. This may not surprise <coughs> you actually, because um, the last episode we saw was, I think, eggheads. Oh my. Um, and the one and the other episode that they wrote uh, was the Meteor, both of which had a Tails element in it. So somebody Sorry, like the writer that likes Tails. We have a writer that likes Tails. My God, what is this? Uh, Romaine now confirmed to be writing at least ten episodes for season two. <laughs> is he our hero? Considering he's the one writing for Tails. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's why we're not seeing that much of Tails because they've com they've they've put Tails towards one writer. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, you're our Tails writer. Write for Tails." Anyway, yes, more Tails is is coming up. It is a, it is a Tails and Knuckles story. Such oh yes, a, such a thing can exist, and it does. <laughs> it's like probably the only relationship really left at this point that we haven't seen so uh, Knuckles and Sticks oh well then yeah oh unless you count the Mayor episode because they have a tiff yeah they they had an interesting moment in that episode mm. <coughs> I think it's Tails and Knuckles really haven't talked to each other all that much no there was, the, get, there was the sweet part, moment when Tails brought Knuckles back round to where everyone else was looking <laughs> after Knuckles thought he was lost because he was facing the other way. But apart from that, not really. <laughs> oh, but, oh, oh the Knuckles, Knuckles occasionally going, not cool, Tails. Yeah, he... he Knuckles is not cool a lot in this, in this series. <laughs> it's like his tertiary catchphrase. His catchphrase is not cool. Not cool character name. Character the name, do not steal. <laughs> not cool name. <laughs> name the breed. Not cool. <laughs> name the breed. <laughs> name the species. Yes. Not cool. Not cool first name the. What's your family? <laughs> not cool animal the character mm. not cool just, it just isn't it's not on leave it out character the animal character the animal do not steal yep so this one is uh <coughs> Whoops. Robot Battle Royale is the name of this episode. And yet, there was not a lot of robot. 
Nor was there a lot of Cubot, actually. Hmm. But there was Eggman. Okay. I think I should make up for the old parts by quickly drawing an old part. Ah, so perhaps today will be the um, drawing of all bots, I guess. Tomorrow morning will be the draw the all bot day. <laughs> today will be the start to draw the all bot day. <laughs> Plot twist. Ah. <coughs> so, where are we? Um, yeah, so, so, who would like to do? Which of you two would like to go for the TV tropes? It's like boom. I'm, I'm assuming nothing major in the way of news has happened to you guys since yesterday. Nope. Is there some news you would like to make up? Um. <coughs> I got a rock. You got a rock. Yeah. Excellent. Good old rock. Nothing beats that. It's it's a dusty one though, so there there has to be some spring cleaning done not done on it. Let's Even see. though it's almost winter, but I mean. Hmm. Are you going to try hatching this rock? Yes. Maybe 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 there will be a character of the animal inside of it. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Cat, I heard you wrestle a giant squid. Uh, I didn't win. You didn't win. Oh dear. Killed your dead, did it? Yeah. Oh, that, that must suck. <laughs> don't worry. Well, well, don't worry. You, you may be dead, but with any luck, you'll get better soon. Maybe. I mean, you got better. I got better. I was pretty bad. You were very bad. I'm not sure. It might. Have, I'm not sure. You might. You know. It might have been a squid that was the cook at that McDonald's. You know. Maybe. Didn't wash his tentacles properly. <laughs> well, you know. You got... So Splatoon Two already came out then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a kid now. You're a squid now. You're. A... <laughs> now. <laughs> You're a cat now. This you're. That's uh, why I now have mental issues. You're you're a cat. No, it's your cat meow, Donny. You're a cat meow. <laughs> you're a cat now. You're a cat meow. You're. You're the cat's meow. You're the cat's meow. Right. Um, okay. Uh, seriously, it's between you two for who, who would like to do this because people have been looking <laughs> forward to this oh, as, as soon as we mentioned that this existed. <laughs> As soon as you mentioned that TV Tropes looks at tropes, suddenly everybody wants tropes. tropes which tropes, bodes, tropes, you know, tropes, incredibly tropes. well for for Bill. <laughs> <laughs> we know, we know, don't worry. <sighs> oh boy, is the TV Tropes... I do have the TV Tropes page up, so... Alright, this is all Donnie. Whoa. <laughs> I, I, linked, I linked it to the two of you, so that way you have it as well, can follow along. Oh, but, also I would like you to know, before anything starts, that uh, Kirk Thornton is apparently the narrator for um, the Up episode of the Disney Storyteller series on iTunes. So if you want to listen to Kirk Thornton talk about Up, you can buy that on right. iTunes. There we Whoa. go. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Vo wait a minute. Voice actors do other things other than the thing we're talking about? <laughs> this cannot be. Oh my they god. They do this role and this role only. They do this role and then they do that role. And then we kind of do this role as well because, you know, switching around, but, you know. Um. Yeah. I don't... So um. Yeah. <laughs> what is they this do role? other roles? Additionally, um, interview from nineteen seventy nine. 
This is a YouTube thumbnail, and this is quite glorious. Is that? Is that? Wow! Is that Kirk? <laughs> it looks like the other pictures that I've got up. We we just have to absorb for a second that. Wow, that, that is very. Kirk Fox is an adult. Well, yes. But, but how old is Kirk? I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually have to look this up now because I'm slightly dousing this. <laughs> uh, he's 59, by the way. <laughs> so that's an image of him at uh, 23. I assume everybody had a was, had a dad stash in the seventies. Yeah, but he wasn't working in the seventies, was he? I don't know. This guy has the same nose. It's not him. I'm confused. The, the earliest the earliest credit that we have for him down here is nineteen ninety seven. Um, here's what it says on the YouTube video. Um, before becoming one of the best-known voice actors, Kirk was an actor at the Oregon Shakespearean Festival in Ashland. Mm. This is an interview that he taped in 1979 mm. when he, he was he was a spry young thing. He was a spry young thing, and by the look... And by he the was look, a spry young thing with a dad stash. Yeah, and by the look of him... He <laughs> and was, a fantastic uh, cardigan jacket. And now you know why we've got Staying Alive music. But this is very serious. obvious... But this is very obviously him, because listen. Uh, I can't in case it picked up by the recording. And then YouTube comes down on us with all of its content ID rage. So I can't. <laughs> um, we will, if I remember, uh, we'll put a link to this. But my goodness. He's, Can I drink he's, he's not just a dad it's not just a dad stash, it's a dad cardigan as well. It's not just a dad stash, it's a dad cardigan. He's got sideburns. He's wearing he appears to be wearing a very thin gold chain. Yes, I did notice that. <laughs> this is amazing. This is this is the beast of the dance floor, just you know. So this is this is I'm gonna send him this and this is how we're inviting him on. <laughs> Oh, okay. Don't draw Kirk like this. Draw him as he is now, please. <laughs> wow. Anyway. So, yes. TV yeah. tropes, everybody. Western animation. You can read along with us in your book. But you don't have a book, so look it up on the web. Yeah. <laughs> so, Donnie. Begin, Hi. please. Right, so... There's a nice, good progress of uh, paragraphs here, a nice long one. Uh, it just basically talks about the show. Like, um, so I think, where should I start at? Hmm. Should I actually start at the list of tropes or just start at the beginning? Um, because... To be honest, I think, I mean... It, it will not be a massive surprise for people to learn that Sonic Boom is a CGI animated entry in the popular Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> video game franchise. <laughs> yeah, Un just... Unless they've somehow not noticed. Yeah, I, I think it'd be good to start where the tropes are listed because like, the other stuff is what we already know. But, um, but basically, Sonic Boom provides examples of Absentee actor, which is where Knuckles and Sticks not appearing in Double Doomsday and Guilt Tripping. Amy also doesn't appear in the latter. Likewise, Sticks is in the in the in episodes cycle. in which characters don't appear and we're just going to put them on the page, I think. Dr. Eggman does not appear in Battle of the Boy Bands and Tails and, Knuckle and, Tails and Sticks don't appear in Bro Down Showdown. So the very first trope that they <laughs> met is something we've constantly been saying in the commentaries for... Like, where, is where is, like... There's yeah, interesting. I mean, the the, the Bro Down Showdown one is 
And very specifically, I mean, Amy doesn't appear either in Bro. Oh no, not in Breakdown Showdown. She does, of course, she does. She does. I was she thinking appears. of the last one where. In Breakdown Showdown, she does appear, and especially yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking of yesterday's one, which, whatever it was called. Uh, the next trope: a day in the limelight. Dude, where's my Eggman? And beyond the Valley of Cubots for Orbot and Cubot. Yay! Unlucky Knuckles, Chili Dog Day Afternoon, and Mayor Knuckles for Knuckles. Yay! Next top villain for Dave the Intern. Yay! Oh yeah! Basically, if you don't want a day in the limelight, is it's a character that's in the spotlight. But you know, it's <laughs> TV trope, so I mean, it's okay. It's okay, Dolly. You don't have to explain everything. Senpai. Uh, <laughs> Senpai. Make, make sure you've got the the show spoilers display option on as well. Cause... <laughs> yeah, because I think by now everyone knows what has been. Yeah, shown. You, 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 you must know, guys. Ooh, <laughs> night vision. Well, the the next trope is actually very <laughs> blunt. Uh, the next trope, the blunt trope, is AI is a crapshoot. Uh, <laughs> from the second episode. You know, they, they quote the uh, Obliterator bot at the the ending to it. Uh, Eggman, Obliterator bot, destroy Sonic and his four friends. And the bot goes, Fortress, Fortress, destroy Fortress, destroy Island Fortress. Eggman, no, what? No, that's not what I said. We're then, still working out a few kinks. And then Eggman hanging on to Obliterator bot's leg is, Obliterator bot, do not destroy Island Fortress. Do not destroy Island Fortress. Affirmative, then, playing up-tempo music while destroying Fortress. <laughs> <laughs> then they have nomina uh, Nominatus. Nominatus. Nomin yeah, that. <laughs> There's not Nominatus. I'm pretty sure we agreed it was Nominatus with this typo here. I'm, I'm who knows? We, 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 God, let, it's that damn villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the villain of Let's Play Musical oh, Friends God. seems to be a, a completely digital oh, entity geez. that seeks to destroy all organic life, having deemed it illogical and messy. In, in fairness, he's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> all just a dream. Warning, there is a spoiler. The wackier half of Chili Dog Day Afternoon was a dream. Was or Knuckles a Yep, it was also Knuckles' pepper-induced hallucination. Yes, indeed. The way they the phrased that, voyage of Knuckles. The way they phrased that, they just made it even weirder than the episode really turned out. <laughs> you think about it, but... Uh, mm. Anyway. Alternate continuity. The show and games are part of a sub-franchise, which are entirely different from the main games. TV Tropes is more acknowledgeable about this than the entirety of the Sonic fan, fan base combined. <laughs> TV That's... tropes. TV tropes is more educated on on matters of continuity for for the canon. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is actually. Uh, animalistic abomination. Wow. Uh, Buster after being fed a mechanical dog bone from Eggman. Um, and we'll also find out that there was another. The funny thing is. When we see this episode, this week's episode coming up, we we'll find out that a robot that was previously destroyed kind of shows up. <laughs> and it's one that we actually did thought that was completely destroyed. And I'll mention it later on when we get to the commentary. But um, anyway, art and evolution. And how. While Tails and Amy just get normal wardrobe changes, Sonic's arms are now blue and his quills are, quills are scruffier. Knuckles... Seems to have moved into a gym for a month and now towers above the other three. Which is Sports the nicest thing anybody said about it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sports tape also seem to be a motive among the characters now, who all have them in some way. With Sonic and Tails even sports taping their shoes. Because, well, that's actually what oh, the shoes... Oh, I never did say the shoes... I never did say the shoes thing, did I, for Metal Sonic? Uh, I don't think you did, did no, you? No, yes, Okay. Um, I, I am jumping in here. The, the clue that it wasn't Sonic was that the shoe print was not interrupted by the sports tape. Mm. The, the shoe print was complete. Had it actually been Sonic's print, the sports tape would have actually shown up as a mark um, on the on the footprint. 
but it didn't. So it was actually yeah. a very cunning clue put in there that whilst the, the, the whilst the shoe may have matched and the print may have been the, the same, it wasn't actually Sonic. There you go. Please continue. There you go. Uh, a standard a extra. Yeah. Robot and Cubot yeah. had their moments, but rarely appeared in any significant pa- capacity. By contrast, their major supporting characters in the cartoon, typically getting at least one scene per episode, and even a day in the limelight on odd occasions. Not today, though. Not today. <laughs> Amy and Knuckles as well, as they've been demoted in recent games. The cartoon returns Damn. them to their role as main characters. That is quite true. Ascended Glitch. I honestly... Don't think this is. No, a they don't. Yeah, this, this 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 is actually wrong. This one. Yeah, dude, where's my Eggman? Has a nod to a pet, which it doesn't. To a patched infinite jump glitch from the Rise of the Lyric video game. The uh, the cartoon was made, I believe, at the same time as the video game. Yeah, it wouldn't have known. Yes, it's, 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 it has an unintended nod to <laughs> a patched infinite jump glitch. Yeah. Now, this one is actually more something I can relate to because I actually know what it is like. Attention deficit. Ooh, shiny. Knuckles, apparently. <laughs> Knuckles suffering from uh, attention deficit disorder. Is, uh... Yep. Actually, in fairness, quite a lot of the cast as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could easily lump the entirety of the village. Yeah. Into that as well. Uh, bastard, bastard understudy. Double Doomsday revolves around Eggman getting one named Dave. When Dave gets fed up of doing menial chore, chores and not menial. being mini, <laughs> I'm sorry. I have ADD. I have an excuse, not really, but you know. Uh, and not being allowed to do actual evil, he snaps and activates Eggman's Doomsday device. <laughs> so basically, they're talking about. Referring to Dave being Dave. So, yes. you know. <laughs> now, the next one, I like the title of this. Bill, 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 Bill Junk, Junk, Bill. Bill. At the start of Fortress of Squalitude, as Eggman's going through his mail, Eggman says, Junk, 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 Modern Layer Magazine. <laughs> Well, if that happened, the episode couldn't have happened, so I mean... Yeah, absolutely. Cat, you just ruined one of the episodes. <laughs> now, now the modern layer <laughs> magazine is... Now the modern layer magazine is dead. GG. Uh, not really. Uh, Bizarro World. In Too Good to Be True, many of the Bizarro characters are different. Knuckles is smarter than the original. Eggman wears green. Amy is more aggressive. Yeah, uh, Tails looks like he's staring off into space. He might not be very bright. <laughs> I didn't really think about that. Uh, Boulder, uh, Balder dies. Bowdlerize. Uh, Bowd- uh To Bowdlerize means to alter existing programs, places etc., ah. so they are less rude and or offensive. Uh, commonly, this takes the form <laughs> of swapping curse words for euphemisms. I don't think this. I'm not sure if this counts because this is about episodes that have uh, ruder things said in French than in English. Yeah, and I, I think this is a good idea of just indicating <laughs> how different the uh, French version is from it's, the. It's cultural. <laughs> it's cultural. What sentence. can you get away with saying? Cultural. In I would, I would put, more under, I put, I put several of these under cultural language sensitivity. Yeah. Uh, but basically, there are three examples given, maybe four. I, I don't know. First one is, in the French version of Closed Door Policy, when Knuckles asks Tails what the word for not smart is, he responds by saying, retarded? This was replaced with obtuse in the English version. I wonder why. Which is actually cleverer, because... I wonder if tu- obtuse is the original word. I, I That's actually cleverer, if than the French version because Tails gave a very smart word for meaning 
not smart. The whole the so, whole joke yeah. was the yeah. whole joke of the scene was Tails keeps talking more complicated than Knuckles yeah. can understand. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Next. Uh, in that same episode, Eggman curses at Sonic after he kicks his spider bots back at him. This was taken out of the English version. In the French version, Eggman says, "Damn you, Sonic! I just took a shower." I don't really need to see that thought. Uh, <laughs> but if you would Egg- like to, <laughs> if you if you would okay, like I'm to, okay, I'm changing the fan I'm doing. If you would like to, Donnie's Donnie's part of a website that has done several <laughs> that has done several videos based around the concept of Eggman dancing in various states of dress and being naked. Yeah. However, in the English version, Eggman says, instead of damn you, Sonic, I just took a shower, he says, curse you, Sonic, I just had this wash. That still doesn't really make me want to picture that right now. But either way, um, there is a third uh, example, though. In the French version of Shea Amy, when Eggman summons his robot army to kill Dave the intern, and Amy asks what's going on, he says, "My my robot army will annihilate that damned upstart. Damn. In the English version, Eggman says, the annihilation of that upstart by my army of robots instead. So basically, in the French version, everyone's blunt. In the English basically, version... Damn! Damn! So basically, damn. In, the, in the French version, everybody's still more polite and better spoken than I am. <laughs> the, 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 the French have a, have a great obsession with the word damn, apparently. <laughs> damn! <laughs> <laughs> France confirmed Shadow the Hedgehog 2. Damn. Uh, damn. Not here. Damn. Maria. Reading TV trips page aloud is a very strange thing. Shadow the Hedgehog 2. <laughs> Maria wanted to see Paris before she died. Now Paris will die. Wee <laughs> wee. Oui, oui. <laughs> Box imagine. and stick trap. Sonic's no. plan for catching whoever was stealing Tails and Eggman's tools. This was indeed a box. What? This is how you catch stuff, haven't you seen TV? Mm-hmm. I'm just imagining French Shadow now in this beautiful... Uh, <laughs> and here's probably the most perfect trope that this could be given to this show. Like, this is the number one trope right here. Breaking the fourth wall. This show does it all the time. <laughs> The show's characters constantly reference everything, from the writing to montages to other various things going on. It's as if the characters are aware they're cartoon characters. For example, Knuckles and Brodown Showdown. Knuckles said, but but I thought this was going to be a Sonic and Knuckles episode. Brick joke. The fish with irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel fair, syndrome. My fair, yeah, but it's spelled as bowel in this, in this room. Like, That's a silly trap. I'm going to rewrite this entire page. I'm going to burn this page to the ground. The, f- the fish with irritable bowel syndrome from My Fair 60 reappears in Blue with Envy 23 episodes later for an identical joke. And if you're not sure what a brick joke is, it's named after an old joke which at first blush... At first blush? Um, <laughs> which seems at first to be a pair of unrelated jokes. At the end of the... End of the first joke, a brick is tossed away, leaving the confused listener without a punchline. At the end of the second joke, the brick returns, and the listener falls on the floor laughing because it's so funny. Um, the only difference between a brick joke and that particular joke in Sonic Boom was uh, it wasn't funny the first time and it wasn't funny the second. <laughs> so, actually, it was just a brick. Irris- a- it was irritable brick syndrome. Ouch. Uh, Canon Foreigner, Foreigner, Six the Jungle Badger, now the new girl introduced in the video games. Oh. Okay. I wouldn't say she's foreign, though. I mean, she, 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 this implies that she's from far away, because. No, uh, Canon Foreigner, when an established existing medium ventures into the expanded universe, writers will often rely heavily on familiar characters and past storylines from the official canon. Unlike the original canon, an expanded universe adaptation also gives the writers freedom to introduce new characters, as the production staff enjoys their newfound liberation from whatever codes and limitations from the original work. Well then. 
female to be a ca- <laughs> Yeah, so to be a canon foreigner is to be a character who is original to a spin-off. If you then move into the main line, you become a canon immigrant. Well, the, ne- the next <laughs> rope, uh, sh- uh, I may need a little help pronouncing this one as well. Uh, Chekhov's gun. Is that how you say it? Chekhov. Chekhov. Um, no, Chekhov. no, that's close, no. I don't know. Uh, in Double Doomsday, one scene has Tails briefly show off his newly invented reverse polarizer. He and Sonic later use it to reverse the black hole created by the Doomsday devices. And in fact, the Doomsday devices themselves count. Eggman shows one to Dave earlier on, and after Dave gets fed up of being treated like a janitor, he goes ahead and activates it. Eggman then activates his own one in, in, reven- in revenge. So what's a Chekhov's gun, basically? A Chekhov's gun is to introduce... I picked, I picked up a gun earlier in this work, and then it went completely unmentioned. However, at the climax, I then whip out the gun and deal with the problem presented. It's a Chekhov's gun because I had it, but it's still a surprise that I used it. it it's, it's, a, it's a sort of, yeah, it's, it's there is an orange, and then later on we'd like an orange. Uh, Cloud Cuckoo Lander. I'll do one. Uh, sticks. Crossing paths of a cross-eyed moose brings a curse upon the moose crosser and the non-moose crossed friends. Don't you people know anything about science? Don't you? However, she's downright rational Ice. compared with Knuckles, who seems to be a little dim on a good day and inhabiting his own little reality for the most part. Downplayed with Amy, while being taught not time by sticks so she can survive out in the wilderness, this happens. I added cinnamon sticks to mine, and if you lock yourself in, you can eat them until the firemen rescue you. Sticks glares at her for a few seconds. Right here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, here's a very short one. Coconut meets cranium. Happens to Amy near the beginning of Kyobot. I think mean... that's pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Uh, this next one, though... <laughs> Composite character. Uh, <laughs> Sticks looks very similar to Marine's design. And is as active as he is. Sticks is as act, as act, bleh. Sticks is as active as Marine is. What, uh, what? Also, she seems to be new to friends like Blaze. Wait, what? This one confuses me. This one is one of the more subjective tropes. Uh, Unless it's a thing confirmed in interview, you can't apply. It. You can't apply it as a matter of fact. Uh, composite character sticks doesn't sticks does indeed look very similar to Marine's design. She, Marine is a very hyperactive character, as, and sticks is as well, is what they're saying. <laughs> uh, also, she's very much the new friend to established characters. She is the wary person. Well, there is also continuity nod. Oh boy. Here's another fun one. Uh, at one point, Cowbot. Continuity. <laughs> yeah. It's not that video. I fail us here. <laughs> no. At, <laughs> at, at one point in Cowbot, Eggman references Dave the intern from Double Doomsday, averting the negative continuity in the rest of the series. <laughs> and it, it helps that Dave becomes a recurring extra and shows up more and more as the series goes on. So, so actually, it was all. It all began with Eggman. <laughs> yeah. Egg- Eggman broke the rules for there is no continuity. Eggman broke the continu- continuatum barrier. Who? Continuum? Co- the continuum. Con- co- the continuity continuum. Continuity <laughs> continuum. <laughs> the CC will go with that, yes. Wait, what? The robot from the, <laughs> the translator? <laughs> Damn it. CC? Isn't that a character in Card Gears? CC, you want me to cop- carbon copy everything you've just said? During the training, they're not. Or <laughs> on Cuba, wear their masks of Sonic and Tails from Buster. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wish there was a series of commentaries where this, these sort of things can be pointed out. 
I wish we, I, I wish that there was a series of commentaries where that could just embody this page without even normally addressing that this page exists. Wait a second. Just a guy features several, such as the walrus lady, Lady Walrus, uh, referencing her baby being in danger with, from Blue with Envy when it happens again, and the Lightning Bolt Society referencing the events of Eggman Unplugged. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but the 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 walrus lady <laughs> as is put here um that's a run, that's a running joke and not not a continuity oh. mod there are a few references yeah. to the sonic boom video games here and there in particular Styx is nominated for an awardy award nothing says you've made it more than this except maybe the pricey price <laughs> while in another sonic reads his autobiography Faster than you is my middle name, and the tell all blockbuster hit from everyone's favourite blue hedgehog. Yeah, and then he has to keep rewriting it because Sonic keep because Sega keep changing his backstory. <laughs> also, this may be subjective, I'm not sure. The tone of voice that Knuckles takes when calling out Sonic in just a guy is the same one he took when Sonic got the group locked up in Lyric's team. Though I'm pretty sure your calling out voice is usually yeah. quite similar. I, I I think that's just Knuckles being his sort of serious judgmental self. I'm pretty sure it's Knuckles having a consistent tone for a consistent emotion. Mm. <laughs> I, I love the name of this coming trope though. Conveniently timed distraction. An unlucky Knuckles, Sonic and the gang have Dr. Eggman cornered, but when Knuckles, who's going through some bad luck, arrives, a metal dis debris comes out of falling from the sky, it almost hits Sonic and the game, gang, Allowing Dr. Eggman to escape. God damn yeah. you, conveniently timed distraction. Yeah, that, that that's something that became quite a uh, running gag in that episode, from what I recall, because of Knuckles' luck and all. But, um, I do like the, another, like, this, this next, like, trope that they have listed, a uh, corrupt corporate executive... <laughs> Uh, Justin Beaver's producer exploited him and his fans using my control in order to make money off his substandard merchandise. Fortunately, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles managed to foil his plans with their own music. If you haven't guessed, there's a lot of spoilers in this. Godspeed, Dreamboat Express. Yeah, I, I think at this point, like I said, if you haven't already like seen the episodes... By now, you probably have been wondering what have I been missing and why is there so many spoilers? But like, like I said, that's the future. It has to use it uses examples to prove their point. But uh, there, there's another trip that follows. <laughs> Could have avoided this plot. Much of late fees might have ended a lot differently if Sonic just returned the book first. At the least, it's a hidden a o a Aesop. I've never heard of that before. A hidden Aesop's Aesop. fables. There you go. A hidden Aesop without about time management. I mean, I like how some of these are very. I like how some of these are very blunt. I like it. This. I love the the tropes are sometimes just so blunt. Blunt. Trope. 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 Harder. Some yep. they used to ha a lot of them used to have a lot more obscure and cleverer names, but then somebody on the wiki went, "No, we can't do this. We need these to be understood." Yeah, I, I like the next one though. The cuckoo lander was right. This is saying the crazy one was right. Gee, I wonder what they're referring to. Uh, Sticks's paranoid rambling about Eggman moving in as a front to build a robot to destroy them was dead on, even down to the name. And her theory about the luck balance of the universe being thrown out of whack, giving Knuckles constant bad luck, is also proven to be true when Sonic manipulates Knuckles into joining up with Eggman, temporarily, to save the day. The Echidna's bad luck, overpowering the evil scientist's newfound good luck. There's at least there's a, several more that could go in there as well, isn't there? Oh yeah, quite a few more. Deadpan then, Snarker. Yep. Sonic, it says here, as usual. Also, all bots, particularly in Beyond the Valley of the Cubots. Also, Cat. What? <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. I'm not that dead bad. She says snarkily. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I, I, I joke. <clears throat> it's okay. Possibly. Yep. Move on, Donnie. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Delayed explosion. Uh, when and why gum berries explode is left unexplained. All we know is that Sonic stand around, stands around them with a cup brimming with them for about 10 seconds before they do. I don't know. I can't recall which episode they're referring to. There. I can't recall that one. <laughs> slow to slow. Uh, den- denser and wackier. Episode plots include Sonic firing Tails from his sidekick position, just to assure Tails' his safety, and Eggman driving Sonic crazy while moving in with him for a while. Those were the first two episodes. Somebody update this description. Mm-hmm. <laughs> description cut. In Fortress of Squalitude, Eggman is sure the incoming represent- uh, representative from Modern Lair Magazine will praise this later. Cut the said represent- representative denouncing it. <laughs> Didn't think this through. Tails confronting Dr. Eggman and translate this. Give me back my robot! Or what? That's a fair question. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, that was a fair question because, well... Yeah. Tails doesn't particularly think things. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's probably surprising though, really, because it, it was Tails was really forceful and demanding, and he it it was it was it was funny how Eggman just like completely cut him off with like exactly what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Do androids dream? According to Eggman, Orbot and Cubot don't have souls, to which they glumly agree. Played for laughs. <laughs> it's funny that they don't have souls. And here's probably the, a trope that could probably apply to a lot of the things I've said in these commentaries. Don't ask. Uh, when Eggman is teaching the now evilized characters proper mustache care, he tells them to brush stroke each side exactly 50 times and no more. When Knuckles asks why, see sticks with a now very bushy mustache, he what mutters, don't ask. Don't ask. Downer ending. Downplayed, but Bro Down Showdown ends with Sonic and Eggman losing the showdown and Amy's couch being destroyed by a missile. Nobody won. Nobody won. Except the people, except the uh, comedy chimp. Because he had a good show. Dave won, and Lady Walrus won. And that's a good show. No, they, they, also, they, they, also, they, they, they terrorized the Gogabers, and that's it's a good ending. To, to be fair, though, Lady Walrus and Daisy are doing kind of mess up their couch, so uh, <laughs> it wasn't a really good ending for them either. Uh, Enemy Mine and Let's Play Musical Friends with Song's crew and Eggman and his lackeys against Nomin- oh, geez, Nominate Natus. Uh, the main premise of the Curse of the Buddy Buddy Temple, this is an example, is that Sonic and Eggman are trapped in a temple that forces them to work together to survive. I think this next trope is probably wrong. Um, I would say that it's partly wrong. Everybody did it. In Fire in a Crowded Workshop, it turns out Sonic, Knuckles, and Amy were all responsible for the fire in Tails' workshop. For some reason, they then add on, but Tails makes up a lie about a failed security system starting the fire and takes the blame to spare everyone's feelings. Where was this? When did he lie that this happened? Is this in like the French version or something? That Tails... I, I don't know. Um, Everyone has standards. In Catbot, Amy and Knuckles antagonize Sonic because he's all too keen of Tails reprogramming the title of monstrosity, meaning the permanent end of Eggman, which is hot linked as a what the hell hero. Also, in Canon Evil Genius Crash the Couch for a few weeks, Amy thinks tossing Eggman out after he's been a dick to him and Tails is uncouth of Sonic. Yeah. Like, like to be fair, though, everyone has standards. That is pretty much the Sonic fan base in a nutshell. Everyone has standards. Um, pretty much. This one's all e- you, Donnie. <laughs> oh, jeez. Evil is hammy. I wonder what this could be about. I think Mike Pollock would know what this trope is about. Uh, I will be back with a new robot with an accurate name and super laser eyes. And he'll feed me ham. Evil ham. Suddenly an evil Donnie. I, I don't like it. 
<laughs> it's okay. We can, we can we can defeat him by yelling his true name. His true name, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, his true name is obviously Donnie Spoos. Donnie what? <laughs> Donnie like, Spoos. Donnie Spoos. <laughs> Spoos. Oh, Donnie Spoos. Zuntai. Twenty-three Spoos. It's your Facebook name, damn it. <laughs> Nominatos from episode twenty-three is even worse. He wears a cape seemingly just so he can dramatically throw it off and wreathe his arms in flame when Orban and Cubot finally reach him. And starts laughing, laughing evilly for little to no reason. <laughs> Sorry. Oh jeez, <laughs> Kev's having a moment. Uh, <laughs> yes. Exact words. When Sonic fires tails and tries to find a new sidekick, damn, both tails and Eggman show up. When Sonic protests, they point out that Sonic's ad says, "All qualified candidates welcome." Which, to be fair, it's a good point. A trope that will confuse everybody else in the room except for me. XP! Sticks Stick. the jungle badger to Marine the raccoon. Her hair and choice of weaponry also resemble those of Ica. Meanwhile, Swifty the Shrew from Blue with Envy bears a remarkable resemblance to Manic from Sonic Underground. What with his green fur, laid-back attitude, hoverboard, and totally radical lingo. Radical speed. <laughs> In, indeed, indeed. If you want to know what XP means, it is short for exported character. There you go. You might notice it's a common theme to say that that Styx is somewhat of a copy pasted marine. Is that because she's a slightly copy pasted marine? That's probably because she's a slightly copy pasted marine. Wow. The... Wow, yeah. <laughs> The key, ah, oh, the key difference between this and the Captain Ursarts is that an XP, while deliberately based on some other character, is still their own person. Captain Ursarts would be exactly the same character, but with the serial numbers filed off, which is a lovely description. That's also <laughs> a trope title, by the way. Serial numbers filed off. I am watching you. Sticks and Dave do this in Mayor Knuckles. Dave just ends up poking his eyes out. Failed to have that drama. <laughs> After being fired from his position as psychic, they're really sourcing this episode a lot. Uh, Tails attends Sonic's interview sessions wearing a cloak. Tails tries to dramatically reveal himself by throwing the hood off, but it gets stuck and he ends up tripping. <laughs> and Double Doomsday, as Dave's declaring his revenge, they'll pay for this. They're all going to pay. <laughs> and then, fries. a moment later, to a customer. You want fries with that? <laughs> you want fries with that? I could go for some fries. Foregone conclusion. Due to word of God enforcing status quo, quo is God, any new element introduced in an episode can be expected to either be removed by episode's end or fade into the background for good. Basically, they're saying continuity, not a thing. Except continuity is now a thing. Well, Cont uh, uh, there's got to be a better word for it then. Freaky Friday flip. In the meteor, Sonic and Eggman switch when they both touch a meteor that has magical properties. They switch back at the end using the same meteor. Plot twist. Uh, freeze frame bonus. Near the beginning of Buster, you can clearly see a Sega Dreamcast logo on Eggman's new robot. Ta da! Let's put that image in the video now. There it is. Thank you, person who had to go back all through the episodes and find it. Yeah. yeah it's okay. Thanks for saying that, Kat. It's okay. You will find it, Kevin. You have been told exactly. Oh yes, what and yes, you you will make me go back to the beginning of Buster. Don't worry, I'll go back to the beginning of Buster. Yeah, right you now. will go back to the beginning of Buster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get that clip. <laughs> furry so. confusion uh, <laughs> the world apparently contains regular non-anthropomorphic -anthrop animals as one episode involves getting sticks a pet and another has peasants that serves as a, me as a meal gentle giant knuckles could probably count as this 
I, I, I want this one. <laughs> oh, get, oh, getting crap past the radar. Oh, yeah. Getting crap past the radar. A.K.A. being very clever with your words and getting, you know, little crap things, innuendos, right. you know, suggestive things that uh, you just get passed through the... Uh... Do you believe in the FCC? But what the FCC won't let Do you believe in what the ABC FCC believe in? See, the trouble shut down like NTV. Um, so, uh, for example, from the very first episode, Sonic, Sonic tells Tails, you're going to be able to play lots of golf and spend time with the grandkids. I don't have grandkids. Well, now's your chance to get some. From My Fair Stixie, we've got the irritable bowl syndrome joke. Uh, from Cowbots we have Tails and Eggman and Tails, Eggman and Sonic uh, that is some <laughs> interesting cocoa want to guess my secret ingredient if he says love I'm out of here mm, but what is the secret ingredient mm. um, from Fru from... with Envy talking about Swifty if he ever visited me I'd disable all my booby traps you never disable your booby traps I know Ugh. In Tails' crush, when Zoe first notices Tails, he becomes so love-struck that Tails accidentally starts propelling himself into the air. And naturally, some viewers thought this was an erection joke. From Brodan Showdown. Now, Dr. Eggman, fill in the blanks. Whenever Sonic does blank, I blank myself. <laughs> well, you see, uh... That's a questionable one indeed. Gilligan cut. Uh, Sonic refuses to take Six pets shopping and Buster cut to Sonic and Six at the pet shop. <laughs> Girls with mustaches. Amy and Sticks and eggheads. To be fair, Knuckles and Tails also have them. Oh boy, this next one. This will be fun. Uh, not really. Going Commando Panty Shop. Upon further inspection, neither name Amy nor Six wear anything underneath their dress slash skirt. Well, that's Zoe because you've be wearing... been looking too hard. How dare you? Well, Zoe appears to be wearing boxers of the same color as her dress. I don't know why they're being this observant. This scares me. I, I, I find it interesting for TV tropes that there is actually no link to the proof that Amy or Styx wear any, don't wear anything under their dress slash skirt. Trust me, I've seen screenshots. Because Twitter and Facebook. They've shared screenshots. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. I found that robot. It, it's not quite a Dreamcast logo. Is it wish? Is it a wishful thinking one? No, oh. it's a, it's a, it's a um, wound up hose because it's a fire robot. So, um, at least they're educated, I guess. Question mark. Mm, so, yeah. so it, it's not an example of Dreamcast. That's not the Dreamcast. No, no, that's it's not an example of Dreamcast. Jen. See, no. here's the thing: like the Dreamcast logo, although it's a swirl, it's not a strong swirl like that one. Yeah, that's the like, Dreamcast logo is a specific swirl. That's like saying it's got a symbolism. It's got snake symbolism in it. Yeah, I, <laughs> like it's like saying if there's like the phone game. Swirl. It's like saying if you see a circle, that must mean it's a <coughs> ring. Like, or a ball. I see three circle. circles next to each other. It must be a Disney. <laughs> Wait a second, that's probably actually very true. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what the action. Did you know that Sonic? Logos. Did you know the Sonic Boom animators put in many hidden Sonics throughout the entirety of the Sonic Boom <coughs> series? Go try and find them. I would love him. I would love hidden Sonic to be a thing, but I think that basically the only equivalent to that is finding lives. <laughs> Go karting with Bowser, double sub subverted, and can an evil genius crash on your couch for a few days? 
Eggman shows up on Sonic's doorstep and claims that his lair was trashed by a violent storm, asking if Sonic could put him up until his robots rebuild his lair. Sonic accedes, which leads to various mundane roommate hijinks between Eggman and Sonic and Tails. However, the plan is a ploy, which is revealed after an all-night board game session. Eggman was just there to exhaust everyone, then sick a new robot he built on them while they were unable to defend themselves. <coughs> Good times, yeah. Montage. Uh, huh? Ah, uh, go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, Good times, Montage. Parody. At one point, Six implores her robo-pet Buster to remember all the good times they had together, flashing back to scenes we didn't see in the episode. When Buster remains unconvinced, Six admits they really didn't really do any of that. A similar scene occurs in Eggman's tomato sauce, when Tails implores his plane, which had been reprogrammed by one of Eggman's tomato sauce cans, to remember the good times. Ah. Uh, I guess indeed. Remember, yeah, that's the thing. Tails has, doesn't even need to be in love with his plane now. He has Zoe, he has Percy. He has, he has Percy. He, he may have Stacy. <laughs> we never yeah. know. Groundhog yeah. Day loop. The appropriately named Hedgehog Day revolving around Eggman's attempts to escape a time loop he inadvertently caused. Groundhog Day loop. The appropriately named Hedgehog Day revolving around Eggman's attempts to escape a time loop he inadvertently caused. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, <laughs> Half-dressed cartoon animal, landscape <laughs> pants, or the, the lack thereof, are almost becoming a running gag. Not really. It was only like twice. Uh, when Sonic is escorts Sticks to a dance in My Fair Sticksy, he adamantly refuses to wear pants. Doctor Eggman has to point out in Double Doomsday that Dave isn't wearing pants yet still has pockets. And when Amy suggests the, that a loser has to do the winner's laundry for a month in, into the wilderness, Sonic complains it's unfair because he and Knuckles don't wear pants. Okay, so it was a, little, a couple more times than I thought it was. Uh, hammer space. Amy and Sticks often pull their weapons out of nowhere. No. Every, everybody in Sonic pulls their stuff out of nowhere. Uh, Amy, okay, uh, Amy, yes. Isn't Sticks' boomerang, like, in her belt... Not usually. Um, I I have no idea. Um, the next checking. Uh, the the next trope uh, is actually an interesting one. <laughs> you said X. Uh, parodied in Mayor Knuckles. The mayor said, "Are you prepared to do your civic duty?" Knuckles says, "Cracking up, cracking up." <laughs> you said civic. Sonic also snickers at the word, leading Knuckles to tell him to grow up. Here we go again. Subverted at the end of Buster, just as Six leaves her pet to find his place, Tails comes up with his own new pet, which he immediately decides against once it eats him. And then he was dead for the rest of the series. Yep, then he was dead. And then him. Yep. Played straight at the end of Dude, Where's My Eggman? Eggman once again erases the memory of Orbot and Cubot, and they soon have the same dialogue as the beginning of the episode. Eggman shows up to ask them where the Eggmobile is. Hostage for a MacGuffin. In a heroic inversion, Sonic, who had switched blank brains with Eggman earlier, holds a pair of scissors to his mustache and forces Eggman to choose between keeping Sonic's body or saving his precious mustache. Humiliation Conga. Unlucky Knuckles is just an episode long an episode long one aimed at Knuckles. Poor Knuckles. Hypocritical humor, the scene. Sonic said, Yeah, Sonic's back, baby. Amy said, Sonic, please don't refer to yourself in the third person. It's creepy. Knuckles then says, yeah, Knuckles hates that. <laughs> Idea bulb. Knuckles distracts Eggman's mothbot with one and pretends it's this. He actually does do that. If you taunt him, you will be just like him. When Eggman is staying at Sonic's place, Amy actually argues for it. She says that if they don't help him, they'll be no better than he is. Eggman agrees. I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> I have to go iron my dog. Uh, the episode Buster has this after Eggman's anti-firefighter bot is destroyed. And then Eggman says, I um, left the oven on. <laughs> Runs off. The episode Let's Play Musical Friends also has this. Cue a lot of dialogue here in a moment. Orbot. Who's up for, the, for charades? 
holds up three fingers and makes a chopping motion with his arm. Sonic says, oh, that reminds me. I gotta chop, chop my arm off. Leaves. Amy, Sonic, you forgot your axe. Runs after him. Six says, I need to go build traps for when you ultimately betray us all. Leaves as well. Knuckles says, sorry guys, I've got to go think of an excuse not to hang out with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> I still, that's still like, that's still funny even now. Uh, <laughs> Tails is left alone with Orion Cuba and can't think of an excuse to leave himself. Uh oh. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> the I know what we can do, Cut. In the episode Cowbot, while Sonic, Tails, and Eggman are waiting for Cowbot to very slowly get to the fortress, Sonic gives Coconut Hull another shot. I, I thought we agreed it was Froconut. Uh, if, it's co- time... if, it's, if, it, if, if it's officially called Coconut Hurl, once more we thought of a better name for something. Uh, Sonic gives Froconut another shot, this time with Sonic trying to throw Eggman. Sadly, Eggman is too heavy. Later, Eggman says he has an idea. The scene cuts to Sonic using a catapult to launch Eggman, and that causes Sonic to get a new record in Froconut. Coconut Hurl, yep. In the episode Battle of the Boy Bands... How are we going to convince that guy we're in the music biz? I know just what to do. Cut. Cut to, so- cut to Sonic Tails and Knuckles in Sonic's house. We'll form our very own boy band. Did you really have to bring us all the way down here to finish the sentence? <laughs> then tells us it later in the same episodes and admits it's actually fun. Insane troll logic. It's not trolls. In Eggheads, Eggman has a basket of evil cookies dropped off on Sonic's porch for him to eat, but he doesn't eat it. When Amy walks by and sees the basket of cookies... Aw, I knew Sonic wouldn't forget my birthday. It's four months late, but it's the thought that counts. Eggman, watching from his lab... Gah! Why would he leave your birthday present on his porch? Where's the logic there? (laughs) Oh, man. I resemble that remark. In the curse of the Buddy Buddy Temple, Amy calls Knuckles obstinate. Knuckles. <laughs> I don't know what obstinate means, but I but refuse, I refuse to, learn. to learn. And then we're just covering that up with the actual clip. I think that's what we're going to be doing for all of them. No, we're not. <laughs> I will send you all the clips required. I uh, yes. Will you edit? This, <laughs> will you edit the video as well? <laughs> Do you want it to be? Do you want it but to be cut? If, if you want to go and in... if you want to see these wonderful clips, go and watch the go and watch the episodes again on Cartoon Network. <laughs> yeah, I'll come over to your house and I'll do it. In too good to be true, Sonic describes the Knuckles from another dimension. Sonic, he may look like Knuckles, but he sure doesn't talk like him. And the Knuckles says, "Hey, I talk gooder than you." <laughs> Excellent. The Jimmy Hart version. In Next Top Villain, when Dave's plan creates disco-style lighting, Knuckles turns on music that sounds suspiciously like the YMCA. Then Late Night Wars adds a Staying Alive soundtrack. Now, we could add many more to this, and I'm trying to remember what's being referenced in the episode we're trying to watch today, but have been stopped by reading this damn page. Absolutely. And that is where we're going to leave it today. (laughs) Next time round, we get Kangaroo Court, but for now... Next time round, maybe I'll get a chance... To actually draw this picture. <laughs> well, apparently you're drawing it. <laughs> no, I read out the page for you, and then I had to go downstairs. If you're drawing it tomorrow or something, aren't you? It will be tomorrow in about twelve Just... minutes. Anyway. <laughs> oh. Okay. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, we'll, we'll return with TV Tropes' um, content <laughs> vocalised um, for episode what is this 46 then 45 yeah but we'll be for episode 46's pre-show we'll start going through some of that stuff well then Ooh. Ooh, I need some more water um, for now though um, we're going to get ready to do ye olde uh, Donnie makes a note of things Donnie is wise everybody 
Uh, for now, we are going to uh, do the episode. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It's funny, some Sonic being mentioned on the Moon page. Um, yeah, we're going to get ready to do the actual commentary of the episode itself, which you can see on the Sonic show. If you were, you know, entertained in some way, um, or you have if or is there if there is a TV trope that you think Sonic Boom should be a part of and it isn't listed down on that page um, put it in a comment at the bottom of this video and tell us why or maybe you could edit the page because it's a wiki or maybe you could edit the, the page point. but just remember that we're up to camera <laughs> so if you put anything above it we're not going to see it not, not, not to mention like not to mention that the show is still ongoing, so mm. they're still keeping out of date even as each episode comes out. There's so still plenty. There's still plenty of time. Oh yeah. There's still seven episodes left. So. God, there's only seven episodes left. <laughs> mm. But anyway. <sighs> so, until that time. Please like, comment, and subscribe for us. And uh, we'll see you over in the commentary. And hopefully after that, back in for the post show. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.